Hey everybody, GB back with another tech review. I've been on a little hiatus, but um, I'm glad and definitely appreciate those of you that have stayed in tune with the channel. And I'm going to be hard at work in the near future to get you guys some real good content and some quality reviews. Today, we're going to be talking about the Nexus 6P. Now, this is a beautiful phone put together by the folks over at Huawei, which is a little known cell phone manufacturer, but actually quite large over in the China area. And Google has partnered with them this year to bring us one of two of their Find Nexus devices. And this was a device that I was really, really excited to get a hold of. It's a beautiful phone. And uh, we're going to go over and talk a little bit about the specs of the device and just all, all around show you what it can bring. And I've been using it as my daily driver for about the last week or so. And I can tell you, I'm quite pleased. It's a beautiful phone, fit and finish is top notch. And I think you guys are, are really going to enjoy this phone if you go ahead and do decide to make that purchase. Okay. Um, so anyway, just getting to the specs of this phone. This phone is a 5.7 inch quad HD display and you're working with 1440 by 2560 pixels. Of course, it is an AMOLED display. Um, I would say that it's not quite as nice as the panel that's on the Samsung displays of new. But I will say that it is a crispy display coming in at 518 pixels per inch. It doesn't get much crispier than that. Um, of course, you have a front facing and a rear facing camera. Uh, your front camera is going to get you eight megapixels and Google went a different way um, as, as, as they partnered with Huawei. They went a different um, method in terms of megapixels and how they look at that. What they did was the 12 and eight megapixel camera that are in these phones, actually the, the rear cameras are 12.3. But what they decided to do was go with larger pixels um, paired with a two point aperture lens. Um, of course, you get your IR laser assist in this one, which is going to bring that up quite a bit from the cameras we've seen in the past from Nexus. And you're going to get 4K video capture. So you can also do 240 frames per second slow motion, which should get you some pretty good slow motion. So uh, that said, I have used this camera and I'll show you a few of the stills um, of what I got in this video and I think uh, you're going to be overall pleased because I was blown away um, in terms of a Nexus device that this was able to bring that kind of quality. Uh, we just haven't seen that from Google's Nexus devices in the past. We've had good phones, we've had solid hardware, but the cameras have always been lacking and I think those of you that are Nexus fans know that. Um, Huawei incorporated a fingerprint sensor in the back of the phone this time. so. Um, let me tell you a little bit about what I think about that. Um, some people prefer it to be up here um, in the front where the, the home button is normally found on phones. But I'm going to tell you, um, for a larger phone, I mean, my, my finger, index finger, pointer finger rather, almost every time that's where it rests, right on the mark. So it is no stretch or you know any difficulty finding that spot right there and this thing is blazingly fast um, so from an off phone when you touch it it comes on instantly and it works every time I, I haven't had it mess up the only way I can even get it to hiccup is if I just slide my finger across there then it'll give you a message on the phone that you know says that you didn't quite leave your finger on there long enough but I'm trying to do it now and I can't even get it to register. I mean, it's it's just that fast. I touch the back and boom, it, it's on. So that said, um, Google has done a really good job partnering with Huawei and they put together a really good solid phone. Um, I'm just all around impressed with it. So I'm going to put this aside and let's slide in, you know, the packaging that this comes in. Um, it has some really neat looking packaging, really premium packaging for a Nexus device. Usually they try to stay on the low budget mode, you know, just because they're trying to keep their phones down. Um, I've already opened this box, so I'm just going to, it's got a little sticky left on it. So let me get in here so we can take a look at this. All right. So in the box, you're going to get a couple of things. Here's just a quick little card that kind of shows a little bit of what's going on with the different things that come in here. And that's that's something interesting in itself because 
This is uh, one of the first Nexus devices to incorporate um, not only fast charge, but fast charge in the new USB type C standard. Um, and Google was, and Google and Huawei were, you know, forward thinking enough to give you two cables, which I think that's kind of cool. So you have one that is a USB C, a USB type C end on one end and your standard USB on the other. Um, and that's going to be helpful for those of us that are just changing over to the USB type C standard and don't have a bunch of these cables laid around. You're still going to be able to plug it into your normal USB devices and charge it on a computer, that kind of thing. Um, this other cable um, has the USB C, I'm sorry, USB type C standard on both ends. Um, and that works when paired with the charging block that they give us, of course. You can see that it's USB type C that you plug in here. Otherwise, just a standard wall wart. It's a little bit bigger than some, but it does incorporate fast charging. And if you have not experienced that as of yet, ah, let me tell you, man, that's something that you really cannot live without. So, you know, speaking of the charging, I'm going to tell you that Google did not incorporate um the, the QI standard or wireless charging into this device. And I think that I was a little bit disappointed at first, but, you know, after the fact, I quickly lost disappointed because fast charging is not incorporated or has not evolved into wireless charging yet, especially in mainstream phones. So I think I take the quick charge over the wireless charge any day of the week. We'll get to this battery in a little bit, but I can tell you it's an excellent battery. Um, I, I really have to struggle to try to kill this battery. Uh, 3450 milliamps per hour, um, so a really nice size battery for a device this size, even though it's po powering you know, some pretty solid hardware and a, a QHD display, it still seems to last a day and a half easy and all day even under heavy, heavy use. So great job. I mean, that's really what we want in a phone, one that we're not going to have to be tied to the wall, get back to the charger all the time. And I can tell you from first experience that this battery is hard to kill. So that said, solid, solid job by Google and Huawei putting that together. Um, let me push this stuff to the side now. All right, coming back to the design of the phone. Um, you can see that it, 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 the front of the phone is similar to other Nexus devices. Um, you know, I would readily compare it to the Nexus 6, which was my daily driver before this phone. You can see you do have uh, two stereo speakers, one on each end. Um, the phone is relatively uniform, and that's, that's one thing I like about it. Some of the older Nexus devices had larger chins on the bottom or top. This one's uniform top to bottom. Um, the phone has some of your standard sensors. Of course, we talked about the fingerprint sensor. It has a accelerometer, gyroscope, barometer, proximity sensor, amb ambient light sensors, hall sensors, and uh, what something they call Android Context Hub. Not sure what that is, but um, across the back, you do find the rear camera in this, I'd say, a little bit extraordinary of a housing. Um, it brings a new meaning to, I guess, camera bump. It's not terrible. It's just different. Um, it kind of does have a cool look to me. And I think outside of me worrying about scratching it without a case, um, it's pretty nice. Then you have your dual flash here, your dual tone flash. And I, I think there's some other other sensors that I read up under this part here. Um, so I'm not ex exactly sure how they have that configured. Of course, you have your uh, ever famous Nexus branding. Um, so that hasn't gone anywhere, um, and it looks great on this phone. Uh, I can't reiterate enough just how glossy and clean this phone looks. Um, the white is far, far from a fingerprint magnet, so no worries there. Um, and it, it just feels great in the hand. I will say, in my opinion, I think that these button, the button placement on this phone which is right about the midpoint of the phone is a little bit too low because I mean when I'm holding it in my hand as such my thumb tends to rest much higher than they've placed the button so I have to kind of bend down which when you when you contort your hand in these funny you know 
you know, arrangements, it kind of makes a good setup for you to drop that phone. And that's something that with a big phone, you always have to be careful of, which is why I like the back placement for the fingerprint sensor, because I still have solid grip on this phone when I'm using it versus if I have to move my thumb to get down here, this phone has you know, the ability to kind of wobble out as I reach down here. And I, you know, I've been in situations where my phone almost fell over trying to reach the uh, fingerprint sensor down low on like a Samsung Galaxy S S6 or something like that. So no problems here with that. Um, really glad. Um, Google has gone with some really nice hardware on this phone. Um, uh, Huawei put a Qualcomm Snapdragon 810 processor and paired with an Adreno 430 GPU, 3 gigs of RAM, and in this particular model, 128 gigabytes of storage. So, man, rock solid hardware. I can't stump the phone. It moves quick. Got solid scores on all the benchmark tests that I've ran and that I've seen everybody else run across the board. So, um, you're definitely not going to struggle with hardware or performance with this phone. Um, other than that, of course, it's running, you know, Google Marshmallow right out of the box. Um, so more of uh, internal updates, if you ask me. I mean, not a whole lot of uh, visual changes, but, you know, runs really smooth. And I think that's partially what is keeping the design as far as what they're trying to keep across the board with their phones. It keeps that, you know, pretty uh, solid and continuous. And I know Marshmallow has a really big, plays a big, big role as far as battery performance and why this phone just lasts forever. So, all right, great job with them there. Um, so no complaints over this phone, except there is a feature on here where you double click this home button to bring the camera up and it is able to be disabled, but I'll tell you that I, I, more often than not, in my pocket, if I got my hand in there, I hit that button somehow and I start this camera up. Maybe that's just something I need to get used to. But uh, as of right now, I'm, I definitely am finding myself, you know, struggling with every once in a while. I feel the buzz that I've, you know, set up the camera and got the camera shooting in my pocket. So at least they were smart enough to when you do activate that feature, it does vibrate and you can kind of feel that you've done that and go ahead and turn your phone off so you're not just having your camera on in your in your pocket because I don't know what good that'd be. Uh, so anyway, in terms of the 12.3 megapixel shooter on the back side of this camera, um, or on the back side of this phone rather, I can tell you that it is a pretty stellar shooter. And I've been taking some pictures and so far so good. I mean, it, it focuses quickly. It takes snappy photos. Um, you know, the new camera app that came with Marshmallow is really solid, much better than the ones of previous uh you know, Google phones and Google software. They've really done a good job. It's still not the best camera ever. I will say that, you know, my Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge, I still think that's the camera to beat. Um, just a really solid performer, great, great clarity, great depth of field as far as a, a phone camera. I, I mean, I don't even know how they get depth of field with these small sensors. But they are making the sensors just a little bit larger, and that's why we're having these camera bumps in these cameras. But, um, you know, this is a really good shooter. It is a few notches below the Samsung, you know, Notes and, and Galaxy S6 Edges, S6 variants, but still solid nonetheless, and I really don't have a lot of complaints about it. You're not really going to go wrong with this. Um, just solid, solid camera. One of the best, if not easily the best that Google has ever had on one of its Nexus devices. So huge step forward um, for Google on this one right here. Um, we'll go ahead and take a look at a couple of images um, that I took just while I was out and about using this phone. And I think you'll see that clarity and detail in, is on par. Um, I didn't have to worry about missing any shots because the focus was slow or laggy or anything like that. Um, so that's always, that's what you want in the phone. It's, it's the phone that when you pull that out, the camera that you just want to grab shots that you're in the moment and you don't have time to dig for a camera. Even if you're a photographer, you just need to grab a shot and you still want it to be usable. You're not going to have any problems with this. So camera, I give a thumbs up.
Now, looking at um, the phone side by side with its predecessor, the Nexus 6, of course, that's on the left. And, you know, the Nexus 6P I have here on the right. Uh, these these screens are both still excellent QHD screens. The Nexus 6 has a slightly larger at 5.9, whereas the Nexus 6P is at 5.7. But where the Nexus 6P differs is you can see that the overall handset, although it's the same length or height, you know, just as tall as the Nexus 6, it's significantly narrow, more narrow than the Nexus 6, which that makes a big difference in holding this phone and it just feels solid in your hand and even though it's not a huge difference in width it's enough to make a difference on being much more comfortable in the hand so i think it was a smart choice to lose the 0.2 inches and uh you know go with the more narrow display um technically there is a little bit more clarity as far as pixels per inch in the nexus 6p but you know, just looking at it with my general eye, they are both super crispy displays and there's just nothing about either one of them that is subpar when it comes to the display. And the Nexus 6 is still a solid performer. Um, it does not have the topped out specs as this year's 6P, but it's still a phone that I rarely have ever got to stutter in any way. I mean, it's solid. So these phones in comparison, they just both look really good. Um, of course, my Nexus 6, I have uh, a skin on it. I don't really put a case on it, so it's a little bit on the wild side. But, you know, I just love these D-brand cases. They look really good, um, and they do perfect, protect your phone from minor scratches and whatnot. Okay, so in conclusion, uh, talking about the Nexus 6P, um, wrapping it all down to what it's really worth and is it really worth your money, my answer is yes for me. And it's definitely a phone I recommend. Gets my full thumbs up, seal of approval. A solid piece of hardware. Shout out to Huawei for putting together this great phone package. Um, crispy display, takes crispy pictures, blazing fast performance. Um, there's really not a whole lot more one could ask for. If you like this video, do me a big favor and give me a thumbs up. Um, feel free to leave any comments or questions you have down in the uh comment section of the video and I'll, I'll be sure to get a shout out back to you try to get that answered i appreciate you guys as always tuning in to tech tight reviews and we'll see you next time ah!